Should you buy a Wonder Swan or a Wonder Swan color in 2018? The Wonder Swan is the final creation of Game Boy inventor Gunpei Yokoi, who after the failure of Nintendo's Virtual Boy, which is to date Nintendo's worst selling game system, left Nintendo. And he went to Bandai, where he designed this. The Wonder Swan. Unfortunately, Gunpei Yokoi died in a car accident before it could be seen to completion, but that didn't stop the Wonder Swan itself from still being released in the late 90s. So, today, in this rather off the cuff buying guide that I'm doing once again at Epic Games and More in Quadra Village in Victoria, BC, we're going over if you should buy a Wonder Swan in 2018 and discussing the hardware, the games, and some cool accessories. So, let's get right into it. So welcome to Stuff We Play, home of everything weird and retro. If that sounds cool to you, why not subscribe? And today we're talking about the Wonder Swan. So to begin, let's go into the hardware. There are three main models of the Wonder Swan. The original Wonder Swan was a black and white handheld, which was similar in capabilities to the Game Boy. I mean, a bit more powerful, but still an 8-bit handheld. This was followed a few years later by, you guessed it, the Wonder Swan Color. There was another console that was released in Japan around this time that did the same thing, the Neo Geo Pocket, which I've actually done a video on. Now, I should mention, while the Neo Geo Pocket did see a release stateside, the Wonder Swan has to this day remained Japan exclusive. And perhaps most coveted of all of them is the third revision of the Wonder Swan, the Swan Crystal. None of the Wonder Swans had backlit screens and neither did Swan Crystal, but it did have a better screen that was a bit easier to see in general and had less ghosting. Overall, Wonder Swans themselves aren't too expensive. This one right here that's complete in box costs about 100 CAD, though currently I'm at Epic Games more and they're having a blowout sale, which by the way, let me go on a quick aside about this. They do this huge sale every year. Seriously, that's what it looked like when they opened the doors. Crazy huge. However, my own personal black and white Wonder Swan that I have, I got for 10 bucks from Japan. So it really depends how you want to go about getting things and keep in mind that even if you do import something from Japan, at that point you have to go and pay for for shipping and handling fees and perhaps even import fees. As for the handheld itself, it has this really cool design. First off, there are a lot of different colorations of the Wonder Swan, whether it be a color, black and white, or crystal. The Wonder Swan runs on only one battery. One battery, I believe it's one AA battery, and it can get like 20 hours worth of battery life on it. Seriously, this thing lasts a crazy long amount of time. What's also unique here is how you can play it though. You can hold it like this. You have your D-pad on the left side and your uh, A and B button on the right side. You also have power, select, and sound. Yeah, no, no sound dial, just a sound button with a few different layers. However, you can also turn it vertically and play some games like this. Admittedly, with my big meat car hands, playing any game like this gets a little cramped but it's still cool nonetheless, and it really sets us apart from any other handheld. And while yes, you can emulate games for it, much like the Neo Geo Pocket Color, it's another handheld that you really aren't truly getting the real gaming experience unless you're playing the games on real hardware. And speaking of the games, let's get right into them. So what's surprising about the Wonder Swan is how many great games it had. Now keep in mind, all the games are in Japanese. The games I'm going to recommend the most are those that don't have language restrictions. However, some games that are and only Japanese I am going to mention are its Final Fantasy remakes. These are really great remakes and I believe they actually served as a basis for the GBA remakes. So of course, getting Final Fantasy 1, we also got Final Fantasy 2. Really solid ports of these games that Admittedly, you can play on other consoles. They're great on the Wonder Swan, don't get me wrong, but they do have the language barrier. Opening up this Final Fantasy IV box, as you can see, the games actually come on these really cool clear cartridges. What's weird is that they have this bottom bit exposed. It's, it's odd to me, but it's cool regardless. So, of the three games I'm going to recommend that are English friendly, the first is going to be Mr. Driller, which is a puzzle game that originally came out on the PS1. Mr. Driller follows the titular Mr. Driller as he goes through an endless number of colored blocks. Pretty much, the farther you go, the higher your score gets. It's a great puzzle game. Another I'm going to recommend is Gunpei, another fantastic puzzle game. This one is named after, well, Gunpei Yokoi, and it's kind of the Wonder Swan's equivalent to Tetris. It can also be played in this mode, like this. Admittedly, Gunpei is better on the PSP, but this version of the Wonder Swan is also great. But the final game I'm going to mention is actually the only black and white Wonder Swan game I've talked about today, and that's Mega Man and Base 2. That's the reason I got a Wonder Swan, and currently it's the only black and white Wonder Swan game I own. 
Mega Man Base 2, I actually like more than the original Mega Man Base. Much like the original Mega Man Base, which came out originally for the SNES and later for the Game Boy Advance, you can play as either Mega Man or Base. Along with that, you have a slew of new bosses. They have weird names here, I mean, seriously, who thought Air Conditioner Man was a good boss? It takes many assets from Mega Man Base, mainly uh, the intro bosses from there, along with all the music, but this music is great, and I love the D-made sounds for it. it, it it's, seriously, this is a great 8-bit Mega Man soundtrack. Is Mega Man Base 2 for the Wonderswan as good as, say, Mega Man 2, 3, or 6 on the NES? No, not at all. But is it a fun game that's definitely worth picking up the system? Yes, I dare say Mega Man Base 2 is reason alone to buy the system if you're a game collector. But there's also one other area we need to get into, and that's accessories. So the Wonder Swan actually had some really weird accessories for it. I believe, yes, there was a link cable and stuff such as that, but there was also stuff such as a GPS tool. Seriously, this was only shown off at a game show, but there was going to be a GPS utility for your Wonder Swan. Keep in mind, this is a console that was released in the late 90s, this particular model in 2000, and it had a GPS potentially. Oh, and I knocked over the games, okay. Furthermore, there was going to be a camera for it, but perhaps the weirdest thing of all is the Wonderborg. This is the holy grail for any Wonder Swan collector, and the Wonderborg is a literal robot that you can control with your Wonder Swan console. Out of all these, that's the only one that I can 100% confirm did make it to market, and it's a weird, cool piece of tech. And I think that's a great way to describe the Wonder Swan in general, something that's weird and cool. But the real question is, should you buy a Wonder Swan in 2018 and what model is best for you? Even though I own a Wonder Swan black and white, the best model to get for sure, cost wise, is the Wonder Swan Color. So even though it was left in Japan, these are pretty easy to get from over there. But if you want the absolutely best Wonder Swan playing experience, I'd say get the Swan Crystal. Those are expensive and regularly sell for about 130 CAD or more, but they are a great system. By the way, I'm talking like loose with that. Should you buy a Wonder Swan in 2018? Even though this is perhaps the most obscure system I've ever talked about on this channel, absolutely yes but you know what i maybe begin to ramble on just a bit will you be buying a wonder swan 2018 what weird console should i look at in the future and if you have any memories do you have any memories of the wonder swan let me know down in the comment section below and while you're at it why don't you subscribe to stuff we play for more great content like this or even back us on patreon because every dollar earned from patreon does go back into the channel itself so i'd once again like to thank egm for letting me film here thank you again for watching stay classy and i'll see you next time